Okay, hello everyone. I am joined with Shadow Star Shine. Um, I, I don't believe you have any uh, like YouTube or do you stream on Twitch or anything? Uh, no, not really. Um, I do have this channel, uh, Philosophy Power Hour, and uh, you guys can check it out if you want. It uh, we do a weekly podcast, so if anybody's interested in seeing that, they can check it out. Okay, yeah, so we uh, basically coordinate, coordinated this debate on Twitter. Um, basically, the debate proposition is that uh, reducing the unnecessary suffering, death, and exploitation of animals as much as reasonably possible is a moral obligation. So that's what we're going to be discussing today. And um, just to make things clear before we start the, de the debate, mm -hmm. um, when it comes to ethics, there's a lot of subjectivity involved, and I personally believe morality is subjective. So it's easy to just have your own personal opinions on things. So I would consider the debate one if I can either point out a logical contradiction with your ethical system, or if I can uh, get you to uh, bite the bullet and agree to taking away some fundamental human rights. So um, with those conditions met, I would say the debate is one. So. Um, yeah, why don't you start us off? Why do you think it's uh, it's morally acceptable to kill animals in animal agriculture? Like, uh, so I want to make sure that we, we, we go over the, the wing conditions and whatnot, because you, you've put forth the statement, reducing the unnecessary suffering, death, and exploitation of animals as much as reasonable possible is a moral obligation. Um, you want to prove that as true, right? And I'm going to be taking the opposite stance. So now that we've started the debate, you, you've created some different sort of wind conditions. Um, so more more so you want to make it so that I have to believe in human rights, right? Okay, that, so that you don't necessarily actually believe in human rights? No, I do, but so, so that's not going to be really a problem. I don't think we have any disagreement there, but I do want to go through the statement that you've made so that we understand what we're debating exactly. Sure. Okay. So well, the first thing immediately that jumps out at me with the statement that you put is you said moral obligation. Now okay. that's very objectivist language. And I, I'm curious because I know you're a subjectivist. So I, I'd like to uh, understand how you mean that statement. Okay, um, I don't believe morality is objective, but in a normative system, you can make uh, objectivist claims like that. So, so like if we're talking like on a meta ethical level, it, like, is it objectively true that we need to reduce the suffering and death of animals as much as reasonably possible? I wouldn't say that's any kind of objective truth, but if we're going to develop a normative ethical system, then I think within, like, within certain parameters, we can say things are objectively true. But, um... Right, but you said it's a moral obligation, so I want right. to understand, well, do you mean that it has to be within my system or within everyone's system? No. Okay. So what I mean, like what I mean by that is um, it's something that should be a moral obligation within uh, our society, sort of like how we have social contracts that say you can't murder, like it, th those sorts of things are a moral obligation. So I, I mean it in that sort of context. Right. But do, do you think it needs to be a part of everyone's individual moral system? Do you think it needs to be a part of mine? Or do you just think it needs to be a part of anything that follows to it? Okay, I'm not totally understanding the question there. Like, so with ethical systems, I mean, they have to be agreed upon. So I, I don't I don't know what you mean by it has to be a part of your ethical system. Like, I, I suppose so, because if we're, we're talk not talking about laws, right? We're, we're talking about... Our, our own personal ethical system. If you're going to be a subjectivist, that's to say that we all have our own perspective on the on the topic and whether or not that leads to veganism or not. So, so I'm wondering, do you want it to be a part of mine or do you want it to be a part of everyone's? Like, what what is your end well, goal yes. for this debate? Well, I, I, like I understand that you want everybody to be a vegan. That's not really what I'm asking. I'm asking is for you to win the debate is to say that it's an obligation for everyone or that it's an obligation for me or that it's an obligation for you. Yeah, yeah, it, it, I'd say it's an obligation for everyone. And like, look, there's weird, um, 
like there's weird circumstances like there there are primitive tribes people like the sentinelese who live on this like really tiny island like obviously uh not killing and eating animals isn't isn't an option for them because if they didn't they'd just die out like in those circumstances yeah it, it's morally acceptable to kill and eat animals but um for anyone with the option to follow a vegan lifestyle i'd say it is an it is a moral obligation well, I understand that because you have within the statement different qualifiers, right? And I understand that if you're outside those qualifiers, then you'd be exempt from your statements that you're putting forth. But um, when we're going to be talking about subjective systems, you are probably going to be questioning like what I believe. And I want to know if, if what you're going to be trying to prove is that veganism fits into my system or if it tries to fit into everyone's system. Am I just looking for a specific example of a system that it doesn't fit into, or does it have to be mine? Okay, can you can you explain that uh, in a little more detail? I don't know what you mean by veganism fitting within someone else's moral system. So if I hypothetically come up with a person who isn't me, where veganism doesn't fit in, would you be fine with that as a lose condition? So you're saying if you could find an example where veganism wouldn't be like practically achievable for them? Is that what you're No, not saying? practically achievable. I'm just saying that if somebody has a moral system with whatever axioms they have, if I make a hypothetical person up and, and their subjective system does not include veganism, but still has human rights, would you accept that as a lose condition? Or does it have to be me specifically? Okay, I don't know how that would be a lose condition. I mean, again, everybody could have their own subjective opinions on, you know, ethics. Uh, if they don't, like, include a vegan moral principle within their system, mm -hmm. but they still believe in human rights, they can, they can have that. But I'd say a win condition for me would be if I could point out a contradiction within that moral system. Right. So I can make up a moral system that you can't beat. It doesn't have to be mine. Yes, so so like uh, you can make a perfectly logical moral system that possibly could include human rights but not animal rights. Okay, that uh, like that is possible. I haven't seen anyone do that just yet, but it is possible. Um, but you know, we could just flesh flesh things out, see if it leads to absurdities, see if it leads to any other kind of logical contradictions. You know, whatever. Right. So, okay. So I can make hypotheticals up and if you can't beat those, sure. then I still win. Okay. Okay. Next, next point is unnecessary suffering. Um, necessary is a contingent word. So that means it has to be necessary for something. So I want to know what it would have to be necessarily for in order for you to uh, say that it's, you know, un unnecessary. Okay, so I'd consider an unnecessary category something like, oh, well, it tastes good, it's convenient. Oh, well, those aren't necessities. It, like a, necess a necessity would be, okay, well, you have to do this to live. Right. I, that would be something I'd consider a necessity. So if you're going to use something like taste pleasure, um, convenience, you're used to it, family history, something like that as an argument, um, mm -hmm. then those are unnecessary sort of conditions that you're using as an excuse to consume animal products? Well, all things are excuse, right? Like to say that I want to live is, is just an assertion of something you want, just as much as anything else is. It's just the fact that it's more universally agreed upon. It, like, again, there's, there's a certain amount of subjectivity to that, but I, I put like, I, again, we can kind of agree to some extent, like the definition of reasonable and necessity um, I think when we're talking about necessity, it, it would go, it would be around the bounds of, okay, if I don't do this, I die or suffer horribly. Right. Um, well, right. my point is that is if we say I want to live or I want to have a certain level of health, we're just asserting something we want, right? It's not necessary that we live. It's not necessary that we have these health. These okay. are just things we want. Okay. Well, again, if, if we're going to kind of base some things off of fundamental axioms, like, okay, if we're going to define ne necessity as, okay, if I don't do this, I die, then we can say that's a necessity. But you're kind of going into the realm of metaethics. Uh, a few people told me they know of you, and your argument is going to be based on metaethics. We well, sure, it's an ethical debate. Yeah, yeah, th th that's fine. We can delve into it a bit. 
But th this is just more clearing up your understanding of the statement that you're putting forth to me. Okay, because sure. if you just say unnecessary suffering without qualifying what you think is necessary, yeah, then sure. I don't understand the, the conditions. Yeah. I, I like I will intuit that you mean life and probably some level of health, but I don't really understand what level of health would be required. Maybe you mean some sort of mental health as well. So so let's say hypothetically there was somebody whose entire life was, you know, running a a barbecue joint and an order for them. So if you put into law that you can't eat meat anymore, then they would have to get an entirely new job and like a, a new way of life. You might say, well, it might be necessary for your well, your economic well-being, but I still want you to do it. Right. Right. So you would still put that forth. Put what forth? That they, they can't eat meat anymore or they can't do that sort of living. Even if it would, even if it's necessary for their economic survival, you might still say they can't do it. Yeah, uh, I'd say they definitely shouldn't do it. Right. So, so that sort of necessary wouldn't matter to you. That that's like the level I'm trying to understand what you put forth. I, I assume you mean health to some degree, like life for sure, some sort of physical health. Well, would that be correct? Okay, I, I think we're kind of veering a little off topic here. Um, yeah, I but I'm, I'm basic, well, no, it, it is veering a little off topic. Like, like it just sounds like you're kind of di diverting into weird areas. Like, okay, if we were talking about um, did Nazi you not Germany, understand? Well, no, no, well, no, well, no. Listen, if we were talking about like Nazi Germany and like, okay, well, if you're making a lot of money being a, an SS officer or a Somebody yeah, running I, these I understand Holocaust. what you're saying. Like, do, do you get what I'm like? I, yeah, I think you understand. I understand. What I'm saying. Intuitively, I understand what you mean, but I want to make sure that I, I'm not like for the finer points that I'm understanding your point. I, I don't want to straw man you at all. Okay, so yeah, like when I say necessity, it, it mostly has to do with personal health, not like economic well-being. Okay. Okay, I'm fine with that. And then you have reasonably possible at the end of it, which means that for me, that means there's some sort of leeway of, of what would be necessary. Because you're saying, well, it's reasonably possible and not just possible. What, what would you mean by reasonably possible? Okay, so um, like we could reduce animal suffering and death even more if we didn't drive cars or or ride motorcycles or use any kind of transportation vehicle like even when i ride my bicycle like a few flies like run into my helmet or into my teeth or something yeah. and then they die like okay w we have to be able to like live and function norm normally um we have to be able to travel drive like have society kind of progress so do you, do you agree that's kind of vague, like very subjective? Well, well, it's like, again, we can kind of debate different, like, you know, we can debate what we think is and isn't reasonable, but I think there's a generally agreed upon definition of reasonable. I think it's reasonable to uh, say that people should be able to travel to their job, work, pick up like groceries, do whatever they need to do in like a, in a vehicle. So it's not reasonable to prevent people from doing that just to save like some insects flying around that may or may not hit your windshield. But um, I'd say a lot of people, like a lot of people who even eat meat would say, yeah, it's kind of unreasonable for me to like slit a cow's throat open to have a steak when I could just eat tofu instead. Sure, but some people might think that's reasonable as well. That's why I'm just worried yeah, about and the we can debate subjective that. nature on, on well, that. Well, because you could always say, well, that's not reasonable, and this is reasonable, and I would have no idea what your benchmark for Well, Well, sure, and we can debate that like as this discussion continues. Sure. So, okay, you, your, your question to me, I, I suppose you're going to want to know my meta-ethical stance. Um, I really... I so personally, I'd rather not have the debate de uh, delve into meta-ethics because I think it's a total red herring on the conversation. But we can discuss that if it's really fundamental to your argument. I'd rather know, uh, I'd rather know more about your normative ethical system. Or even applied ethics. Sure. 
Okay. Well, we'll go into metaethics if it seems necessary for an understanding to, to draw upon. Um, I, I am, I'm of the sort where I, I would give any sort of consideration to a self-aware creature. And I would additionally give um, moral consideration to humans. Um, if, okay. if we took uh, wait, wait, wait a second. Hold up. A self-aware creature. Mm -hmm. Okay. So define self-awareness. Self-aware is would be like a unification of your experiential data. It, it's like an understanding that you exist as a thing. Okay, that's like pr that. That's basically every conscious creature. Uh, no, I would not agree with that. Okay, so you think an ant doesn't understand that it, it, it exists? Yeah, I don't think an ant understands that it exists. I, I don't think self-awareness is a thing that's attributed to humans until around 16 to 24 months. Okay, yeah. well, when ants run away from danger, try to go around obstacles, they have to have some sort of understanding that yeah, they're you have to have their own unique awareness. Yeah. So that, that's not really the sort that I'm talking about. Okay, so what do you mean by self-awareness? This is just like an understanding that you exist. It, it's not just the fact that you have cal like a calculation that can, that can sense objects and that you go around them and stuff like that. This is more conceptual. So a conceptual understanding that you exist. Yes. Okay, you don't think you automatically sort of have that when you get to the point where you understand that you have a body and, and you have to go around things? No, because it's not an understanding of yourself. These are just calculations that we use from somatic memory. Okay. All right, well, why don't you just continue? All right, well, from there, I also said that I also value humans, just right. outright. So, so that would be a start of an ethical system. If you want to go into more niche categories as for like, um, like a baby, I, I would value the fact that it could develop that sort of self-awareness. Okay. Which I would... That's interesting. Uh, are you uh, pro-life or uh, pro-choice? Uh, I take more of a consequentialist look at that question. Okay. So would you... So... Would you fall more into the pro-life or pro-choice camp? I, I would say neither, because more more to my argumentation on that subject is that if if it were the case that you know someone has a kid and they would be miserable by it, you know them and the kid would live miserable lives. I would say that that's a really good argument for being pro-abortion. Whereas, let's say someone. Um, didn't they wanted an abortion and didn't get one and later realized that you know I'm really glad that I didn't actually get that abortion my life is better because of it I would say that's a good argument against abortion and I would take more of an empirical understanding towards the question so it's very consequential it's like whatever would produce uh, the aggregate aggregate best situations Okay, that sounds like you're kind of judging things on an individual basis, like on a policy level. Would you say abortion should be legal? I would take more of a rule utilitarianism look at that rather than a individual, because obviously we can't predict the future for individual people. Okay, so so would you actually support abortion being legal as a policy or not? I, I would take an empirical stance on it, and I don't have the data. Oh, okay, so you're saying you're undecided? Yeah, basically, it, okay. it would be whatever uh, leads to the best results, which I can't tell you what does. Okay. All right. Did you want to continue on or? Sure. Um, I, I would also be fine with, you know, like if, if you wanted to talk about a hypothetical uh, alien race or something comes, if they were self-aware, right? And we, we created that sort of dialogue and say they had, uh, you know, retards or um you know babies of their own i would respect them as a species being generally self-aware so i i would respect their their um retarded people as well as i would our own if that makes sense okay wait um you'd actually so you're saying you would you would give moral consideration to mentally retarded people including like mentally retarded aliens yeah 
Okay. <laughs> if I mean, if the aliens were generally self-aware, yes, I guess I would. Even the retards. Sure. Yeah. Why not? Okay. What if the retards weren't self-aware? That doesn't matter. It's just what? the fact that they're part of the species that are. Okay. I I would respect that. Okay, so that's interesting. Um, I, 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 we can definitely talk about that. Um, so basically you're saying you feel that it's morally acceptable for you to just go, like, you know, pay for cows to be, like, killed so that you can have a steak uh, because you don't believe they're self-aware? Yeah. Okay. Um, do you have any actual evidence that cows completely lack self-awareness on a conceptual level? Sure, yeah, you know, like well, there's inferential uh, in, in where, whereas, like I was saying, uh, self awareness seems to develop in humans from 16 to 24 months. This seems to be around the same time of mere test recognition passes. It's also around the time of developing episodic memories. I feel like these are very interrelated uh, mental processes that develop around the same time and they all kind of feed into each other to make a subject. Okay, that's kind of interesting. Um, I believe there is a type of insect that can actually pass the mirror test. That's the ant, but the ant has a biological imperative to do so, so it would have instinctual um, reasons to be able to do that. Whereas an ant, if it's marked and it goes back to the hive, it'll be destroyed. So this would be a necessary instinct for the ant to have, rather than a developed self-awareness that leads to passing the mirror test. This is why I would okay. say, like, okay, if, wait. If, if we created a robot, say, that could pass the, the mirror test of rec recognition by programming it to do so, right? Like, that wouldn't be that difficult. However, if a robot was not programmed to do that, but instead had learning algorithms that developed into that ability, I would say that would be more of a sign of self-awareness. Okay, so then you'd agree that the mirror test is actually unreliable because a, an animal could have self-awareness, not be able to pass the mirror test, or be able to pass the mirror test, but not have self-awareness, at least it's by... It's not a perfect use. test. Yeah. Like, it, it does have inferential power, I do think, but I do not think it is a perfect test, no. Okay, sure. So, why... Okay, so if... if like, I would actually argue that, like, animals like cows, they, have, they absolutely do have self-awareness. Um... Why, why do you why, so that? why okay so like just the way they uh, care for their their young care for each other uh, the way they can like you can clearly see them suffer um, I think they do have a high a high enough cognitive level to possess self awareness um, I, and I'm not level? actually look I'm not actually even sure if cows can or can't pass the mirror test that would actually be interesting uh, I I've, I've never seen any results of it. Um, as far as I know, the, the passes of the mirror test right now are elephants, corvids, um, dolphins, I think octopus as well. And then you have like the one-off of ants. I'm not sure if it's just ants. I, I do know, I, I do know, uh, I think it might be a particular species of ant, but I, I know ants, but I, I think there, there might be other insects. I, I could be wrong though. Hey, if um, you find any studies, like I, I've looked as much as I could, and that's the list of uh, animals that I can find that have passed the mirror test. Okay, so um, basically, you're saying there you have so in order to have um, a right to life, essentially, you have to have a conceptual level of self awareness. Yeah. Okay. Um, does that so? Do you actually believe that if you don't have a conceptual level of self awareness, you aren't able to suffer? And, and uh, I, think, able to... I think the idea of suffering is, is totally different if you don't know you exist. Like, I do not think these are the same concepts as we would, like, anthropomorphize the understanding of what suffering is. Because for us, we, we do suffer at this conceptual level, right? We understand that we exist and that, and that this suffering is ours. And that's a, a totally different experience than what it would be to just have a qualia of it, if you could even call it qualia at that point. Okay, um, so you think if I were to, um, I, I, I don't know, take a hot iron to a cow, press it against its side, and it, it like it triggers nerves and nociceptors in its brain that you know detect pain, mm -hmm. you don't think that pain exists at least in the same form because they don't have a conceptual level of uh, well, understanding the pain that exists. they exist. Like obviously, okay. they have nerve endings that work and they have brains that process that information.
But to say that it's the sort of experience that we have in a subjective sense wouldn't be accurate. Okay, so you're saying the pain exists. They they absolutely can feel pain, but like but like that's not questionable. We would agree on that. Okay, but okay. there's a different understanding of when it's conceptualized. Uh, when you understand that you exist as a thing, pain takes on a different meaning. Well, does it? Yes. Okay, and in, in what way? In that you understand that it's your pain because you have a concept of self. Okay, well, I, I don't, like, if you're feeling the pain, it doesn't even really matter if you know it's your pain or not, you're feeling it. What is you in that sentence when you're saying you're feeling it? Uh, well, what do you mean? You said you're feeling it. If you're, if you have pain, you're feeling it. What's the your if there's no sense of self? Well, it doesn't matter if you have a sense of self, you're feeling it. It doesn't matter what if you are conceptual. In that sentence, that would be me, or if it's if I'm in the cow's body or whatever. Like you, you they can't, wouldn't you be can't feeling. You can transpose it. your own brain into it and then try and gain an understanding, right? Because you're going to be bringing your okay, own. Okay, no, well, no, 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 no. You're, you're you're contradicting yourself now. You said the cows can feel pain. Is that? Are we not agreeing on that? Cows have pain receptors. Yes, they go to the brain, and yes, they use that information to do things. But if oh, we don't okay. have a wait, sense wait. of self... Uh, okay, so you're actually trying to say that cows have nociceptors nervous in a nervous system in a brain that allows them to detect pain, but are you actually saying that they can't truly feel it because they don't have... a uh, uh, like the concept of self, like they don't have self-awareness, the concept that they are themselves. It's not that they don't feel it because feeling it is just the pain receptors themselves. So it becomes tautologically right, right. true. So then what I just said makes sense. But what I'm saying is it's not the same thing without a sense of self. And how is it not the same? Uh, because you reflect it on a concept of who you are. That is a different sort of thing than just a feeling sensation. How do you reflect pain on a sense of who you are? Like if I smack, like if I'm hammering something and I accidentally hit my finger, like I think it would hurt regardless if I understand that, like if I have self-awareness or not. Do you think it's possible to hurt yourself and not understand that it's your pain? Yes, it absolutely is. Okay, in, in what way would that be possible? Okay, okay, well, there is actually, there are actually circumstances where you could turn off somebody's ability to understand that they are themselves. Um, DMT can do this. Uh, psilocybin mushrooms can do this. You, um, you can have an altered sense of self, but you will always have a sense of self if no. you're having a sort of episodic memory. Okay, okay, um, okay, that, well, then the animals you're killing and eating have a sense of self. Okay, well, you can assert that, but I don't understand why. Well, you, you just said episodic memory. So sure. then the animals themselves, the, okay, then your, your argument... It, is it your belief that animals have episodic memories? Yes. Okay, well, you can take a look at the scientific information on that, because it's generally not in the community that they do. Okay, well, why don't you define episodic memory? And An episodic memory is a memory of, of an experience. It's like the, the it's being able to recall past events and relive them, or hypothetical future events and imagine them. That is okay. an episodic memory. Okay, so uh, the animals you're eating. I mean, like I said, the, the data is not on your side. If you take a look at the scientific community and episodic, an episodic memory in animals, you will find that most people assert that this is a human-only ability. I don't particularly agree with that. I would think that it's most likely um, a part of anything that has re reached self-awareness, but I, do, I don't think this is a common ability of okay. animals. If you're actually defining episodic memory as being able to recall events that have happened and make predictions based on those events, then that's every animal. It, it's not net that's, making well, that's virtually every animal, sorry. Sorry? It's, it's not just making predictions. Like, I understand that, that animals have the capacity to, to, to solve certain puzzles and certain things like that. But it, living it as an experience is a different sort of thing. And that's what episodic memory is. If, okay. if you want, you can look it up. You don't, you don't have to take my word for it. But just look it up yourself. 
Okay, it sounds like you're kind of conflating a number of terms and it's kind of going against your own argument. Okay, so first you defined first you defined um, self-awareness as being able to have uh, the concept of the self mm -hmm. and then you said and then you you made another claim saying if an animal has episodic memory, then it has a level of self-awareness. Yeah, I, I would say that self-awareness is a required aspect of making episodic memories. Okay, well, then cows, chickens, pigs, they'd all have episodic memories. I mean, they, like, they can have memories of things that have happened and then react accordingly based on those memories. Uh, like, if, and, like, no, well, if humans have abused them, they will make sure to avoid humans. That does not need to exist as an episodic memory in order to make behavioral adjustments like that. Okay. Um, what about uh, training for... Uh, like, you can train a, a, a pig to basically do the same thing as dogs, run a obstacle course, shit like that. Sure. Um, detect colors, crap like that. You don't think you'd have to have episodic memory? No, you just need semantic memory to do that. Okay, and define semantic memory. It's being able to recall events like the who's, what's, where's, that sort of thing, and make associative patterns. That does, okay, the way you defined it doesn't really sound much different than episodic memory. Well, an episodic memory is like, it's like streaming a movie. Okay. Right? Whereas in a semantic memory would be like the data of the movie and access to it. Does that make sense? Okay, I get what you're saying. So, uh, episodic memory would be like I'm actually seeing the image of the movie in my head. Um, semantic memory is I can remember details like uh, colors, certain shapes, patterns, that Correct. sort of thing. Okay. Uh, why is there a meaningful difference between the two then? Like where if you only have uh, semantic memory, then I'm a it's okay to kill you. But if you have episodic memory, then it's not okay to kill you. Well, that's what I'm saying is like a self-awareness type of, of uh, experience is, is completely different. It is that you have a conception of yourself that you can apply all your experiences to. And I think that gives a sort of richness to an experience that is worth of moral consideration. Whereas it, just having this data separated is not. Okay. Like, are you actually trying to claim that animals aren't capable of experiencing well-being because they don't have uh, a concept of, of self and episodic memory? I'm saying this is a sort of well-being I care about. Okay, so you're saying any other type of well-being or pain and suffering doesn't matter if you don't have episodic memory? Well, self-awareness. We can go with self-awareness because that's usually oh, my okay. Okay, at the moment. Okay, okay, so... okay. I, so, episodic okay. memory is just is something I think is emergent from self-awareness. So it, it doesn't necessarily need that. That would be a higher requirement than just saying self-awareness. Okay, wait, so you're saying you need self-awareness to have episodic memory, but if you don't have self, uh, self-awareness, self then you cannot have episodic memory? Yeah, that that's what I think. That's what you think? Well, from the literature I've read and from what I, I understand and believe. There, there's a lot of data I've only read you know, so many books, I've read maybe like two dozen articles. Um, this is where I'm at and I want to continue reading and learning on this topic. But uh, yeah, this, this is what I believe. Okay, so just to get your side of the story, just to make sure I, I'm following you here, you're saying because these animals we're killing and eating uh, don't have self-awareness, they don't have episodic memory, that means their their ability to experience well-being and ability to like suffer as well is yeah. not to the same level as beings that are self-aware can experience uh, well-being and suffering to uh, like a higher degree because we have self-awareness episodic memory. I, I wouldn't say to the a different level because that just sounds like it's a numerical difference where this is more of an emergent property. But yes, because they don't have self-awareness, I am not worried about it. Okay, uh, so you basically say they essentially can't experience... So are, are you actually saying that they can't experience well-being or they don't experience well-being or suffering to the same degree? 
it, it's really how you want to define well-being. If you want to define it without self-awareness, then obviously they can't. It just becomes tautological. But it, the way I'm saying it, they don't. Okay, so mentally retarded people who, to like to whatever ability we have, don't ha like to to what degree we can actually determine who don't have self-awareness. You're telling me they can't uh, suffer. Well, they can suffer in the sense that you're thinking they can, and they can't suffer in the way that I'm saying they can. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, so. To be clear again, do you actually care if you cause pain or suffering to animals? No. No? Well, not the ones that are not self-aware. No. Okay, so cows, chickens, pigs. Sure, yeah. Okay, so mentally retarded people who have, as far as we can tell, the same level of self-awareness. Um, it's okay to torture them? No, because they're humans. Okay. <laughs> so I guess we're on to name the trait then. So are you familiar with the name the trait argument? You bet I am. Okay, so for those of you who don't understand name the trait, um, name the trait is a way of detecting if there are any logical contradictions in someone's moral system. So if you're going to say, um, well, it's okay to kill and eat an animal because animals aren't as intelligent as people, well, you're naming a trait that you're claiming is lacking in animals. Well, in order to be logically consistent with name the trait, or sorry, in order to be logically consistent, then you'd also have to say if that trait was missing in humans, uh, intelligence, then it would also be okay to kill the human. So you'd either have to bite the bullet and say, yeah, it's okay to kill people who are mentally retarded, sort of like, you know, cows. Uh, or you could just say, oh, no, it's not okay to kill a human, then that's a logical contradiction, or you could come up with another trait. So it sounds like you're using the trait species. Uh, which is kind of interesting. Do you want well, to... It's, it's one of them. It, okay. Well, to understand the difference between what I care about and what I don't care about is the things that I don't care about have nothing I care about. That, that's, that's the easiest way to understand it. So if anything is self-aware or a species is just generally self-aware, I care about it. Or if it's human, it does not have to be both. It just has to be either. Okay. So you're saying if something is true of the whole of the species, then if you can find exceptions, then you shouldn't make an exception in moral treatment. Well, not, not even just necessarily that. Yes, I do believe that, but I also just care about humans in general. It's, it's more That's of an fine. inclusion species, speciesism as it is, uh, as opposed to like an exclusionary path of it. Okay, so so it sounds like you're you're naming species a, as the trait, or at least one of the traits that you would say, uh, even if like a human being was retarded, doesn't have self awareness. Well, it's it's human, so therefore that trait makes it you know gives it the right to life. Whereas you know a pig isn't human, so you know it lacks not only self awareness, but it also uh, isn't human. It lacks that trait of the human species. Yeah, yeah, that's correct. Okay, um, so basically what you're saying is um, if something is mostly true of the species, then we should treat uh, somebody who's like mentally retarded as a fellow human? That's how I would treat them. I'm not saying what other okay. people should do. Okay, sure. So uh, let's, let's say there's a hypothetical scenario here where you mm -hmm. take, you get a cow, and this cow happens to have self-awareness and be just as intelligent as a human. Is it okay to kill and eat that cow? Not if it's self-aware, no. Oh, okay, well, you don't see that as a logical contradiction? How is it a contradiction? I told you I care about self-awareness, and you described it as self-aware. Okay, but it's not part of the human species. I never said it had to be. I said it had to have either of the capabilities. Okay, so it has to either be part of the human species, or it doesn't have yeah. to be part of the human species, but have self-awareness. Correct. Okay. All right, let me just think of uh, how to progress the argument from here. Um, all right. Um, let's see. Um, Seems like it's a little difficult to catch you in a, a logical contradiction. Um, I, I'm just having more issues with the 
statements you're making about uh, self-awareness and ability to experience pain and suffering, because that seems like something you're, it, it seems more important than the species thing. Sure, if you want to discuss that, we can. Do you know anything about phenomenology or have you researched anything about that? Well, no, it's not something I've really studied much, um, but if you're going to claim that like a human that um, is mentally retarded uh -huh. should still have the same rights of other humans, I, I kind of see an issue with that because it well, seems like- Well, not the like, same rights because obviously, well, you know, if, if you're mentally retarded enough, you're not gonna vote or- Well, I've, I've talked about that before. Like people have kind of tried to straw man me with animal rights and say, okay, well, do you think cow should have a right to vote? Well, no, obviously. And it, it, cow shouldn't have the right to vote for the same reason mentally retarded people shouldn't have the right to vote. So when I when I'm when I'm referring to like rights, I, I'm basically using it as a general term for uh, respecting somebody's right to life, well-being, things like that. Sure, or so, or you could even say it's like preference utilitarianism, where it, it's equal to what you are able to want, right? If you don't have the cognitive capacity to want to vote, there's no reason to give you the right to vote. Right. Okay. Um, so uh, the issue I have here is you seem to be placing greater importance on uh, like even uh, you seem to be placing greater importance on like a being's ability to suffer and experience well-being, even if they aren't self-aware than the actual species. So I, I actually kind of see that as a contradiction. Sorry, what, um, what do you think is a contradiction? So you seem to be placing greater value on a being's ability to experience pain and suffering or experience well-being, even if they aren't self-aware, rather than what particular species they are. So, it, like, if you cared more about whether or not, like, it, it's among the human species, then you you wouldn't have said, okay, well, it's you wouldn't have said it's not okay to kill a cow that's self-aware and has a no, it's just, it just means I care about more than one thing. I, no, I have well, no, no you are, you are in fact, well, no, listen, you are in fact placing higher value on a, a being's ability to experience suffering or well-being, even if it isn't conscious, rather than the actual species they belong to. Because you said, you said... Yeah, I uh, said, if a cow is self-aware, then, then it's within my right, values. Right, but you, then you said, if, if a human isn't uh, self-aware, but it, it's still not okay to kill that human. Correct. Or, or like, even torture the human. You, so, you do not and, understand that's not a contradiction. That's just having more than one value. Well, you're not only having more than one value, but you're also, in that statement, claiming that... Uh, it, it matters more whether or not they're they're capable of experiencing uh, suffering or or well-being, even if they're not conscious, than what species they belong to. Now, I'm not saying any well-being or suffering, because your definitions of well-being and suffering for non-self-aware things is not something I care about. Uh, say that again? I didn't catch that. I said it's not just all well-being and suffering, because I understand that you have a concept of well-being and suffering that goes below the, the conceptual level of which I'm describing, and I don't care about that. I'm just, I care about- I know you personally. Body. Yeah. Okay, so. look, I know you personally don't care, um, but the point I'm making is, it sounds like you actually care more uh, about whether a being can experience suffering or well-being, even below the level that you actually care about, rather than the species it belongs to. I don't uh, understand what you mean, I care about something below the level of which I care about that thing. Okay, maybe I worded that funny. Um, so let's go over this again. You said um, you wouldn't be okay with torturing or killing uh, a human who's mentally retarded, um, who, um, but who's a part of the human species. Right. But you said it's okay, it, it's not okay to uh, kill a cow that has sentience, uh, or sorry, not sentience, that has uh, consciousness and, and maybe even intelligence to the point where... Uh, as I, I don't want to go too much into the word consciousness because there are you know, a lot of different understandings of that word. So just use self-awareness. So well, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I accidentally m mixed up those words. So to me, w when you're making that claim, it kind of sounds like you're putting, uh, like when you're saying that it's not okay to 
uh, kill the human, e even though they lack the level of uh, of uh, self awareness that you'd care about. Right. I, it, it sounds like you still care uh, to some level. Like it sounds like you still care. Yeah, of course I care because it's okay. within one of the values that I hold, which is humans. Okay. So why does it actually like you even? But you even said like if an alien species had. Like you even said, these these rules would hold true of another like species with consciousness. So I don't even understand how human species is a value to you. Why not? I have uh, just instinctual empathetic reactions to the human species. These are just inborn in me, and it's it's like looking at a fish corpse or a human corpse. It, it, even though that neither of them are alive, what it means to me to see a human corpse. Is just completely different than what it is to see a dead fish. Okay, so I, I don't know if you see it the same way. Maybe you see these two things as identical objects or just dead matter. But I would say I have a conception of humanity that that when I look at a human corpse, I get a different sensation. Okay, right. Um, so okay, that that kind of sounds like an appeal to. You. Uh, Evolution or biology? It's not an appeal to. That's just an explanation. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Um, I, I I still don't understand how that's a reasonable uh, explain like a reasonable enough explanation for why it's not okay to uh, like torture and or kill somebody who's mentally retarded who doesn't have a sense of consciousness. Uh -huh. um, because again, you're you're basically saying they have such a low ability to experience uh, suffering or, or understand like the consequence of, of death, basically. Like, because I low... care about humans. It's, it's what humanity oh, okay. means to me. Okay, okay, I know that. I, but... I don't understand what you mean it's not good enough. What, what do you want? If it's, if it's one of my values, it is one of my values. I can't just change that. Okay, well, I could argue that uh, certain people with mental retardation even aren't even human because they, they lack the required number of chromosomes to be human. Well, then how are we talking about humans? Well, right, like again, it's, it, it can be somewhat arbitrary and subjective. Right, and, and I'm sure that you know, my empathetic levels would have some sort of um, conceptual range in where something that was human-ish, I would automatically have that empathetic reaction to it, right? I would just wouldn't be able to disassociate my my understanding of humanity by looking at it and just understanding that it's slightly different. Do you know what I mean? Right. Okay. So like I can I can understand that, you know, for whatever reason you have more of an empathic reaction towards humans. But um th like uh somebody brought this up in a, a past debate. There's a I think it's called anencephaly. I, I believe that's how you pronounce it. It's a it's a genetic like it's a basically developmental disorder where um, the brain doesn't develop properly. You know when the you know the baby is developing inside the mother, and when it's born, it's not sentient. Like just plain not sentient. Has no level of consciousness. Sure. Uh, has no ability to, to feel pain or anything. Um, let's say just you know hypothetically, if we live in in a society where like, you know, it, it's perfectly fine to just dispose of that child. Uh, like, in most cases, they only live, um, like, a few hours, at, or at most a few days after they're born. Uh, but there are some rare circumstances where they're able to, uh, you know, live longer than that, and they have to be, like, fed through a tube and shit. Um, would you actually have any kind of problem with just uh, disposing of, of a child like that when they have absolutely no ability to suffer, no consciousness whatsoever? I would probably have some sort of empathetic reaction to it, although I wouldn't say it would be as you know severe as as like if we're going to talk about like sure. people with mental disabilities. Sure. There, there would definitely be a range. Um, I, I wouldn't be Why? able to do it without any any reaction whatsoever. Like it was like trash or something. Okay, if it literally has the same amount of consciousness as a rock, why would you care? Just just because of what humanity means to me. It, it okay, just would well, not be easy to do. Okay, well, it like again, we could argue the definition of a human. Like, does a human even have to have a brain to really even be considered a human? 
I mean, no brain whatsoever. It would just be a corpse at that point. It wouldn't be a lot. Yeah, and that's basically what that thing is once it's born. And I would give it the dignity that I would give a human corpse, but obviously not beyond that. Okay, so you're basically saying that you feel emotions for n what are essentially non-living things that have as much consciousness as a rock, which is zero. Sure, yeah, of course. Right, so basically you're saying this, like, empathetic reaction for humans, like, okay, it has, it has, like, you know, an evolutionary biological value to it, we should care for our own species just from an evolutionary standpoint, but from, like, a practical standpoint like this, it really, it, it's not a meaningful value. There, there's nothing, there's, values don't have to be practical. Sure, they just okay. are what they are. Okay, so, like, do you agree it's kind of nonsense to even... No, I don't agree. Put val this is my value. I don't okay, think well, that any values are any more nonsense than any other ones. Okay, well, you're basically saying that you'd give moral consideration to something that has as much consciousness as a rock that doesn't sound kind of nonsensical to you no like i would treat it like a corpse if it was dead but i would give it the dignity a corpse deserves that is human whereas i a dead fish i would just throw in the trash okay um yeah okay so there are basically two problems with your argument so far um your claim, like, like this argument you've made uh, where you value species, human species in particular, and um, self-awareness, mm -hmm. um, I, I don't see how species is really a, a valuable determinant here. Um, uh, like, it, it just sounds like an, something you've arbitrarily kind of came up with. Are, are you telling me that there are non-arbitrary values? Okay, well, they're arbitrary to an extent, but I mean, there's usually well, practical the purpose. What, what is the difference? Okay, what do you mean well, practical purpose? It's a thing you value, so therefore you value it. What, where are you getting I, okay, I, I understand. I understand your point, but there are, like, there doesn't seem to be really much practical purpose. You're, you're just saying, okay, well, this is what I value. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, how how do you get to look, your values? Well, look, do you look, have a different path. Well, no. Look, it's no different than me saying, okay. Well, I I have value on things that uh, have thirty two teeth, uh, forward facing eyes, a uh, nose shaped like this, lips. Sure. That's like it's it, it it's ar like extraordinarily arbitrary. If yeah, I like all values are. So if that was truly, they're not. Well, okay. Well, they're, they're not. Look, they're not as they're not as arbitrary as that. I, I would agree that they they are arbitrary to an extent, but there are like they. No, but if that was truly really your value, what you just described, if that was true of you, then that would be as arbitrary as any other value. It's just the fact that they don't come like that. Like we don't tend to develop concepts like that and then value them. So we, we would say that's not a universal value. That's a really weird conceptual understanding that happened to happen. You know that that happened, but it, it's just as arbitrary as anything else. They all bottom out to tautologies. So if you disagree with one of my values, I don't know what to tell you. It just is a thing I value. Okay. Uh, okay. Fair enough. Um, so that's one of my problems. Um, I think the biggest issue I have, though, is um, you're you're making like a meaningful difference between um, what was the terms again. Um, what was the t two types of memory again that you the, that you mentioned? Semantic and episodic. Yeah, semantic and episodic. Um, so is that actually the most important uh, principle within? Uh, is that the most important uh, trait within self awareness that actually makes self awareness matter? No, like it comes. It's an emergent property of self awareness. It's not what makes okay. self awareness matter. It's just this is like a way of determining whether or not something would be self-aware or not, because you would expect these sort of emergent properties to exist had you had self-awareness. Okay, but one of the reasons you said for why you don't give moral consideration to uh, non-self-aware non beings like cows, chickens, pigs, is because they don't have episodic memory. So no, what other- I, I know, I'm saying I, they don't have self-awareness, and that's why I don't give them moral consideration. Right, okay, so- the episodic so memory. Not... So it was, was something we brought up. Right. 
Okay, so what other so what other properties of self awareness other than episodic memory uh, like gives self awareness value in the way that you describe it? it? It's just like a unification of data. It's to say that I have a concept of me, and all these different things are a part of me, and that when something happens to me, I understand that as myself. That that is a greater, richer sense of experience than just having everything ununified. Okay, so when ants run away from some sort of danger, when uh, like like every insect does like does this, they can run away from danger. Like uh, very 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 insignificant beings uh, have this ability to like recognize danger, run away from it. When fish uh, try to avoid bears that are trying to scoop them up, or even just you know people, fishermen, like absolutely when, no, well, no, listen, no animal listen. in existence well, surviving. Well, don't do these things well yeah okay that's fine um but like you're really making a, a meaningful distinction like between self-awareness as you've described it and uh -huh. a lack of self-awareness when clearly clearly they still value their own lives it doesn't seem like self-awareness is really the, as you described it, I don't think that's a general definition of self-awareness. Like, I, I know you're not trying to do this, but when you say their lives, you are almost implicitly stating self-awareness because there's a there for them to reference. But that, that, that wouldn't be uh, a correct way of describing it. Do you understand what I mean? Okay, well, no, there has to be a there. They, they Okay, so um, I think some rodent studies actually prove that uh, animals do have a level of self-awareness where they can understand that they can actually understand that they can suffer and they can die and their uh, other members of their species or social group can also suffer or die. So let me, I actually had this prepared because I thought it would come in handy uh, sure. for the debate. So let me just sh screen share this. So uh, this was uh, a study done on rats where they were trying to discover whether or not uh, rats have empathy. And uh, one of the experiments was they put uh, one rat in a tank of, of water where it, uh, where it would be like drowning essentially. Uh -huh. And they had another rat where it could open up, um, I'll just keep the thing locked on me. And they I, had another I, rat where just, they could- Just before you even continue, I think rats have em empathy. I think a lot of animals have empathy. Okay, well I think like I think every social animal has some amount of empathy. I, like I, I don't think it's possible for them to exist in a social group without empathy. Yeah, I, I agree but, with you. Like but, that this is just this is required. Right, but the point I'm trying to make is if they have empathy, then they have a level of self-awareness that should give them uh, that where we should respect their right to life or or their their desire to live. I should I, say. I, I think you need to understand that like these sort of behaviors do not require self-awareness. Sure, but I'm trying to point out self-awareness as you, you described shouldn't really be a determining factor for whether or not we needlessly kill animals or not. So I think uh, I'll, it is. I'll go Okay, well, I'll go on and you know if, if you disagree, we can just discuss it. So basically they put uh, one rat in this like tank of water where it was drowning. They, they had another rat here. Mm -hmm. that can open up the tank, save this rat. Now, they actually gave an incentive uh, for this rat not to save uh, its fellow rat. It would, they'd give the rat a piece of chocolate if it didn't save its friend. Sure. So it actually had an incentive not to save, you know, its rat buddy. But um, most of the rats actually chose to save its, its friend here. And what's also interesting, if um, this rat had an experience of drowning already, it would more quickly uh, act to free its fellow rat. Um, what's also interesting is if the if the rats had um, social experience with the other rat. So let's say this white rat had a social experience with this white rat. Yeah, they would it would also likely. Yeah. So and yeah, that, that, none of that's surprising. Well, right. And if this black. So let's say if this rat was black and it was socialized with white rats then it would also be more likely to save the white rats. But if it was never socialized with black rats, even though it's a black rat itself, it would not want to save the black rat. Mm -hmm. So what that suggests to me is um, these animals do have a level of understanding of themselves and their life and well-being uh, to the point where you would actually consider 
that uh, they should have a right to life. Um, if they wouldn't have the sort of behavior, if they didn't have uh, that level of understanding that you say is kind of the benchmark for, um, or, or the standard we should have for giving a creature a right to life. That, uh, that clear, is not like, my standard. Well, well, okay, well, what is your standard again? Self-awareness. Now, you're okay, trying well, to say that it requires self-awareness to do these behaviors. I disagree. Okay, okay, uh, okay, no, uh, okay. You, you do agree they have a level of self-awareness. It's just not self-awareness to the level that you kind of... Like bodily self-awareness, but conceptually, okay. conceptual uh, self-awareness, no. Not at all. None okay. of that is required for Okay, well, behavior. well, listen. Okay, well, listen. Again, I'll, I'll go over this. I think they do have some level of conceptual self-awareness because this rat can understand that this rat is in trouble and suffering. And if this rat has had the experience of being drowned and suffering, it will more quickly go save that other rat. That so it has, no, it has, Richard. it has an understanding. It, it has an understanding. I get that you want to assert that, but I'm telling you, I do not think that's the case. Uh, okay, well, it, the, like in, in this rodent experiment, they clearly have an understanding that they are suffering. And given that they, that they have that experience, they can even apply it to other members of their own social group. You can just use associative semantic memories to do these things, Richie. You do not uh, okay. need conceptual self-awareness. Uh, okay, uh, and again, I don't really see a meaningful difference between somatic memory, episodic memory, to the point where, oh, you only have semantic memory, or somatic memory, um, therefore it's okay to kill you. If we can- Well, I, I get see, it, but you disagree okay, well, with where I draw the sure, line. Sure, sure. What, what more do you want to do with that? Oh, okay, well, the point I'm making here is basically you're drawing you're drawing an arbitrary distinction, and I think you're just doing. They're that all arbitrary a... distinctions. Yes. I okay. Well, look. Uh, okay. Well, look. When we can agree that these beings can suffer and they do have a will to live, you're just creating an arbitrary distinction here, saying, "Oh, well, they they don't meet the standard." Like I could do that with people. Like, oh, well, people don't have a high enough level of intelligence or consciousness or whatever, so I can kill them. Like I could do yeah, that. Yeah, you could do that. Of course, this is what a subjective moral frame allows you to do, but what's the sure. point? You wanted okay, to well, say that you can expose either an inconsistency or that I denied human rights. I haven't done either of those things yet. Okay, well, I, I think, I, I still think your moral system does lead to absurdities. So like really, like in, in, okay, well, look, you, you said you don't care if animals suffer. So Wait, like- that's, if, that's your absurdity? We already knew this going into and starting the debate as a non-vegan, obviously. Okay, well, look, okay, well, look, um, th that's fine. Um, you can create, like, like I said before the debate even really started, I said, you can create a totally consistent moral argument, but I did mention that it can lead to absurdities. So, um, is it, so is it morally acceptable for me to take a dog who, do you actually believe dogs uh, lack self-awareness? Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's say I take my dog, uh, skull fuck it in the eye socket, uh, skin it alive, and uh, try to keep it living for as long as, po as possible with its skin off while I stab it with a needle uh, until it just passes out from exhaustion or whatever, or shock. That's morally acceptable because it doesn't have self-awareness to the level that you uh, think is the golden standard for... Uh, I mean, I would take a complete virtue ethicist stance on that to say that if that's the sort of thing you do, that you are just a dangerous person that I do not want in my society. Well, no. Uh, well, let's just say hypothetically, I only want to do this to animals because I only care about my species. I wouldn't believe you. You sound Okay, like that's fine. Okay, that's fine, but let's just say hypothetically, you could actually, there was some sort of technology where you could read my brain and we, and you could determine beyond any reasonable doubt that I'd never harm a human because in my ethical system, I think it's totally wrong to harm a human. I only think it's wrong to harm uh, beings that don't have self-awareness like dogs. So right. it's so according to you, it'd still be morally acceptable for me to skull fuck my dog, rip its skin off while it's still alive and just poke it with needles until it just dies after it gets its skin ripped off? I find the fact that you would just take pleasure in something like that to be fucked up. Okay, th that's fine, but is it morally acceptable? No. Okay, why? Because the type of person you are to gain pleasure out of just the mere torture of something. Uh, but you said they, they can't really truly suffer because they don't have suffering. I don't care if they could really suffer or not. Like we've said that under your... <laughs> 
What, what do you mean you don't care if they could really truly suffer? Not in this example, this is not the only consideration I would have. It's just the fact that you, as a person, take pleasure in, in just injuring things would make me not want to associate with you and not want uh, you in my society. Okay, but I, I gave you the hypoth hypothetical scenario where that person wouldn't be a danger because we have the technology to, ter to determine it's whether or not It's not necessarily danger. that you're just a danger. To and, and by the way, this isn't consequentialism that you're talking about here. It, it's I know. I know that it wouldn't be consequentialism because you already described it as not a danger to other things. Yeah. So I understand it's not a consequentialist argument. Okay. But you are still the type of person but who derives pleasure out of torture. Okay, but you said earlier that you can't truly suffer if or really experience pain if you're not self-aware. So how is that even like torture by your definition? I never said something couldn't suffer. I said they could not suffer in the way that we suffer, which is a thing I care about. Okay. So, okay, but why would it actually matter to you if this person wasn't a danger to, to humans in any way, but only wanted to torture animals? I mean, just because of that behavior makes me sick. Yeah, but, but you, okay, okay, so isn't that weird? It sounds like you actually care about the well-being of animals. It's not the animals, it's you. It's you that I'd have a problem with. Okay, so, but you just stated that you can't really even torture animals because they're not self-aware. What do you mean so, I said you can't torture? Uh, okay, Torturing can just can't. be injuring things. Okay, well, it's giving, it's causing pain, not necessarily injury. Y you can torture somebody without actually giving them injury. Sure, so you're just deriving pleasure from, from, like, it's suffering. stimulating pain receptors. Yeah. yeah. So why would I want to be around you if this is the sort of person uh, you are? Okay, well, that's fine. You don't like there are certain people I don't want to associate with Catholics, Christians, Muslims, Jews, uh, anybody sure. who follows any kind of religion because I don't think those people are, are trustworthy. I, I think they're kind of delusional, stupid, hypocrites. But that doesn't mean they should be totally removed from our society. It's just a choice that I don't want to associate with them. Um, Right. Now, and I'm, do, I might take, actually, no, I might no. take a similar stance, but no, the, the the way I would say it is, I would have a stronger reaction than you have to Christians and whatever. Okay, well, the actual like you you seem to actually care whether or not animals suffer, even though you said that you don't care. No. Okay, well, at, at the beginning of the debate, you said you don't care if animals suffer, and, and now I gave you a situation where if uh, you were a, if you were a, like a human, had no, like had no intention ever of harming another human being, we could determine this like empirically, but he just enjoyed like horribly torturing animals, you'd still see that as immoral. Yeah, I would just have a problem with it. I don't use words like immoral, because I, I don't think oughts really exist. But I would still, like, this would not be in my value set, no. Okay, so you wouldn't actually say that's immoral. You'd say that's more morally neutral, but you just choose not to associate with that person because that sort of behavior makes you feel uneasy. Yeah. Okay. Um, that's interesting. Um, I Okay, so... I don't know how much more we can really draw out this conversation. Like, I, I think... So Would you like to say that I have a contradiction or some sort of absurdity? I'd say you have uh, some absurd moral views, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't say so far that I caught you in any contradictions. So what would be an absurd moral view that I have? And can you please define absurd for me? Okay, well, I... Okay, well, absurd... Uh, again, it's kind of... Uh, it's a general definition that I think has to be, that's generally agreed upon. Um, it is subjective, so some people think wiping out Jews isn't absurd. That That's perfectly reasonable. So, you know, it, it is something that has to be agreed upon, but I think the majority of people would agree that if you have the position that it's totally fine to skull fuck your dog in the eyeball, in the eye socket and rip its skin off. I never off, said it was. Okay, well, you said it's morally neutral. No, I didn't even say it's morally neutral. I think you're fucked up for doing it. Okay, why? 
Why? Because you're a person who derives pleasure from pain. Okay, and why does that matter if you're giving pain to something that isn't um, self-aware? Because of what you are. It's not because of what you do. It's what the kind of person you are. I think you're fucked up for doing it. Okay, well, well, no. I mean, would I be a fucked up person for smashing a rock? Well, no. Yeah, right, right. So, well, I mean, if you were crazy enough and all you did is maniacally laugh and break rocks and run through people's gardens and shit, I would say you're pretty fucked up. Oh, okay, that that's a, a weird behavior. I wouldn't say you're fucked up. I'd say you're kind of crazy. But let's say you just go down to the river. You, you just like to smash rocks. Like, would you call somebody somebody like that fucked up? <laughs> it really depends. I mean, not just prima facie just on that um, specifically, but I know it, it would depend on your behaviors. Okay, so let's just say like... Because like, know, like, if you're smashing rocks, you're not so much deriving pleasure out of pain. You're just, you like smashing things. It's not quite the same thing. Okay, but the point I'm making is you, with, with the, uh, the claim you made essentially was that because these animals lack self-awareness, their pain is essentially meaningless because they don't actually uh, understand where the pain is coming from? Is that the type of wording you'd use? Well, they wouldn't have a, a sense of self to reflect it upon. Right, so basically you're saying their pain is essentially meaningless because without, a, without any ability to reflect upon it, there's no way to actually experience it to any true degree? Is that basically the type of wording you'd use? I'm not sure I would use experience it, but like it would be a totally different type of experience. One that, that I wouldn't say is worthy of moral consideration. Okay, different moral experience, different how, or sorry, different experience, like different how. Well, like, I don't know how many times I can say it, but if you experience pain and reflect it to a sense of self, you have a conceptual understanding of, of your values and, yeah, and the but way they affect you. Whereas in, if you don't, it's a lot less unified, and these are just like perhaps either individual qualia experiences, or maybe it's not even relevant to call them qualia at the time. Okay, so you're basically saying pain is a, a meaningless experience. It, I'm like, not using the word meaningless. Like, what meaning do you want? No, I mean, like, it, we shouldn't have moral consideration or be concerned if a being is feeling I'm saying pain. I don't. Okay, well, if you don't, then you wouldn't want other people to think that way? I don't prescribe things like that. I don't think morality works that way. Okay, well, would you rather live in a society where people care if animals are feeling pain or don't care? Well, like, that, which is the sort that I care about? I would prefer that people care about the things that I care about that tends to be beneficial. Okay, so if, if you live in a society where nobody cared about, like, causing animal suffering, then, like, you'd rather live in a society like that than a society where people did care about animal suffering? Well, that doesn't matter to me. Okay, but you just said you... Like, the fact that there are vegans well, in the no... world doesn't it upset me. Okay, well, no, this doesn't make any sense. So, first, you claimed that you find it really fucked up if somebody would take like get like take pleasure out of torturing animals mm -hmm. and then you said you wouldn't care if uh, we lived in a society where people just didn't care about uh you know torturing torturing animals no i would care if i lived in a society where people just tortured animals for fun i, I wouldn't like that society is, is okay, that more okay clear? so the society we live in well i mean there are different Teleos, there's different reasons well, that well, people no. do it. Well, I'm okay. No, 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 I no. want to make the distinction. I am okay with people killing animals for food. Yeah, for fun. So you're causing animal suffering for fun. So animal suffering is an in inevitable consequence of the, industry, of the industry. You're going to cause suffering and pain to these animals. And the only reason you're eating meat is for fun. So you're, you're stating now sure, like, that you have fun. a problem. Yeah, so we're torturing animals for fun. So you have a problem with the society we live in, and we, we you think, like, according to this... No, I, I don't have a problem with the society that we no, live do. in. Obviously, I do have problems with some some factory farm practices, you know, like why? the videos... That you well, why? Up. 
Why? Because I think those types of people are really fucked up. Oh, okay. They, well, they're, well, no, they're no, experiencing they're, they're pleasure from. No, they're from, not. No, they're not. They're just trying to make money. They're not experiencing pleasure from it. And a lot of those factory workers get horrible fucking PTSD. What do you mean? I, if if a factory worker was just doing it for food, I have no problem with it. If if they are the ones that are like on those videos, just smashing things with hammers for the hell of it, then I have problems. Oh, okay, with that. well, we we don't even have to go to that. Like, we don't even have to go to that level. Um, like, I'll, I'll give you an example here. So, um, this happens all the time. I go to uh, chickens, like chicken save vigils. Like, the, there's this animal rights group called Chicken Save. Uh, they go in front of uh, chicken slaughterhouses, protest, uh, and just, you know, film everything, put it on the internet so people can see what's going on here. Um, so a lot of these chickens, they're super, super afraid when they're on these transport trucks. And uh, they put holes through these transport trucks so that there's air coming through so the chickens, like, don't overheat and die before they reach the slaughterhouse. Uh -huh. um, now, because these chickens are so afraid, they'll grip on to the holes so that, like, they can't be moved. Well, okay, if we, like, if you just slowly try to take the chickens off of the thing, get them calmed down, it takes way too long. It's just not practical. So what the factory workers will do is they just rip them off. And sometimes you have to pull them so hard that their toes and feet just fall off. They're gripping so hard that it literally rips their legs off. Uh -huh. So that's obviously causing them pain. Uh, but that's an, that's an example of um, not not causing an animal pain for pleasure, but it's just a, a consequence of, yeah, of right. industry. It, it's something that, that I don't have a problem with that. Okay. So, okay. But you just said that you have a problem with people torturing animals for pleasure, but the end result is pleasure. The, yeah, the reason the you're doing that. Well, no, the, the reason you're, well, no, listen, the reason we're doing that is for pleasure. So you would have a problem with that. There is a difference, a distinction between pleasure in the fact that something conceptualized is that this being is in pain. That's why I want to do it. And then there is a different conception of I'm going to get pleasure from the food I eat of this creature. Okay, so so now you're just trying to you're, you're just trying to create a level of separation here to give yourself an excuse. If what do you mean? No, no, no. no. You're creating, you're creating you a level of I separation value. here. No, you're creating a level of separation here to of give yourself an excuse. Of course I'm creating. That's what a distinction is. No, n well, no, it, it's totally fabricated. So the reason we're... The reason fabricated we're, how? No, okay, well, look, you're trying to create um, a, a separation here between paying for uh, animals to be to be killed so that you can ha take pleasure, personal pleasure out of eating a chicken and an inevitable consequence of the industry being horrible suffering and death to these animals. So That's you can't- That's not the distinction I just made. Sorry? Incorrect. That is not the distinction I no, just no, made. That's you're trying incorrect. to separate, well, no, I, I understand what you're trying to do. You're trying to say, okay, well, it's a different thing to like, just like beat a chicken with a hammer because you, you it, you have fun doing that and right. paying for a chicken so that you can enjoy, uh, you know, a nice KFC meal, but then a consequence of the industry being that these animals are horribly tortured. There's no uh -huh. meaningful distinction there. I think there's a meaningful distinction there. Well, uh, okay. Well, how? Because I think there is a difference between taking pleasure in the fact that you understand that something is, is being smashed to death for the fun of it, and the distinction between I want to get food out of this thing. I okay, feel so one is psychopathic and dangerous. Okay, you understand? You understand that's not a consequentialist uh, moral view. I'm not pure consequentialist. Right. Okay. Uh, I'm just I'm just pointing that out. Okay. Well, I'd say there's no meaningful distinction between that because you're just creating an, like a level of separation there that's totally meaningless. I don't uh, understand what you mean by meaning. Values are in and of themselves meaningless. Okay, no, um, not in this, not in this circumstance. Um, if I'm doing something to cause, like, to give myself pleasure, but as a result of me doing that, it causes animal suffering. Yeah, then but in, I'm in not either... using that universal principle, Richard. I've what? made a distinction. Uh, right? Okay, so I, I'm, I'm talking. Hello?
Can people in the chat still hear me? Chicken after. And, and by the way, you can't eat the chicken after you smash it with a hammer. Your mic is totally not working. Right, you okay. That you don't hear. All right, you're back. You're back. Oh. You cut out, you cut out for a while. Okay, I'm back. I'm fine. Yeah, I think so. So, did you actually hear me? No. Okay, so basically what I was saying is there's no meaningful difference between the situation where you smash a chicken with a hammer because you just find it fun and paying for a chicken to be killed and an inevitable consequence of that, the chicken suffering and, and dying, and then you eating the chicken. There's yeah, you're no saying there's no meaningful no. difference to you, and I understand No, no, you there, there just that. isn't any meaningful difference. If what you're doing, if you're causing suffering for personal pleasure, then there's yeah, no meaningful difference. I don't use that universal principle, situations. Rick. You can't hold me to a universal principle. I don't hold. Uh, okay, look, if if I were, okay, let's say I had my own chickens, okay? So, um... I, I produced so many chickens that just as an inevitable consequence of me producing them, they're going to suffer as a, like because there's too many for me to handle. Like they're going to be neglected. Um, some of the handling practices I have to use, it's going to make them suffer. Um, and then I end up killing these chickens and then eating them because eating them gives me pleasure. Okay. 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 So you are causing suffer for personal pleasure there. Yes. Uh, all right. Okay, so let's say I had um, chickens that I, I just bred so that I could smash them with a hammer. Uh-huh. Okay, so y you don't see that there's not really much of a meaningful distinction there? Richard, do you, do you know what a universal principle is? Okay, well, explain it to me. Because you are saying that every time that you gain pleasure for causing suffering to animals, it is the same thing. That would be a universal principle. Now, if I go in that category and I make distinctions between things in that category that I think are meaningful, then I am not using that universal principle. Does that make sense? Okay, that, that does make sense. But the problem is, if you know this is going on, then there still isn't any meaningful distinction there. No, if there is know, a meaningful distinction because I'm telling you, to me, it is meaningful. How? Okay, if you know for a fact what you're going to do to receive pleasure is going to harm these animals and, and like not cause them to suffering. Do with that, it's due to the intentionality of the person doing it. Well, you have no, no. When you buy these products, there is there you have the intention of causing harm to them because you know that's an but inevitable that's consequence. But that's not the principle I'm talking about. I said for someone to have the intentionality of deriving pleasure from just smashing things because they know they're stimulating pain sensors. That I have a problem with. But if they're doing it for the product of food, I don't have a problem with it. It's not just the fact that you're caught getting pleasure from suffering. That is not a universal principle I am using. It is a distinction within that category. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I, 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 I just don't see a, a meaningful difference there, personally. I, I, I'm I not saying that you have to. Right, right. And, and I don't think you've come up with a good enough argument for why you think there is a meaningful distinction there when the consequence is All exact. values are tautological, Richard. I, I know that. I, These I know. Are, so it just is my value. So I, I don't care that you disagree with it. It just is what it is. Now, now do, you, do you see any contradictions? No. Uh, okay. But the pro okay, but again, the problem is I, I, I think your position is kind of absurd. Uh, and, and yeah, from your perspective, I understand you're going to say and it's look, absurd. And look, um, I, to be honest, I kind of do see some contradictions here, and I don't, like, so one contradiction that I, I, I kind of feel you're making is um, you're, so you're, you're basically saying that you wouldn't want to live in, or sorry, what I should, what I should, what should I say? Um, you're basically saying you find it really morally fucked up <clears throat> that somebody would go to the trouble of like torturing an animal and, and just derives pleasure from torturing an animal. Yeah. You, like you find that fucked up. I find but, that okay. intentionality fucked up. Right. But at the same time, you're, you're basically saying that the, these animals suffering doesn't even really matter because they don't have, uh, they don't have self-awareness. So I see that as kind of a contradiction. It's not. It's just the fact okay. that I have more of my values.
focused on the action the individual is taking than the thing it's taking on. Okay, I see. So you're you're saying the intention of the individual to cause harm matters more than the actual harm they're causing? Yeah. Okay, but like at, at the same time, we came up with the hypothetical scenario where this person would never harm a, a human being. That, that's still a problem to you? Yeah. Okay. okay it's not so, the fact, like, I, I think that is a great right. concern oh. and, a, and like that makes more gravitas to the situation. But even if it's not the case that they will be a harm to human, it's not like a consequentialist sure. um, calculation. It's, sure, it's sure. more just like, I don't like the action. Okay, I, I get that. Okay, I, I, I perfectly understand that. So you actually care more about the intention than the action itself in that circumstance? Yeah. Okay, and then when we talked about the animal agriculture industry, uh, we talked about how, as an inevitable consequence of that industry, you're going to cause animal suffering. Now, sure, you, yeah. tried, you tried to make a, a separation here saying, okay, well, these people are only trying to buy food. They're not trying to actually torture animals. Well, I, I don't see how you can really make that argument, especially like after we've discussed this, you know, as an inevitable consequence of you buying these products, that is going to happen. So that does become your intention. Yeah, but it's not a consequentialist outlook. It's not the intention. People aren't making factory that farms is. in order to beat up animals. It's not like an animal buying. I know that. Them. Look, I know that. I know that, but you that is still your intention to do that if you know that is going to happen no it's not your intention to torture it's your intention it to derive food products well, well no it is your intention to torture because you're using industry practices that inevitably lead to torture so i, yes, I don't know if you're intention. using a correct definition of intention here y yes i am you're, you're saying it's a consequence of the intention but that's not the same as it being the intention Okay, well, no, if you know it's happening and you continue to support something that is happening, then that is your intention. Like well, your original- the same well, thing. No. When, you, when you talk about what's reasonably, um, what you're reasonably able to do, you talk about driving around and like hitting bugs and stuff. It is not your intention to go out driving to hit bugs, right? This is just a consequence of what you do. That is a distinction of intentionality. Okay, I, I kind of understand what you're saying here. Um, now, you might think it's fucked up if somebody went on a drive because they wanted to hit bugs. Like, this was their... I want to, a deer to come out in front of my car and I want to smash into it. You'd be like, well, that's a pretty fucked up intention to have. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know if that's... Yeah, like, okay, the thing is... If you accidentally, okay, so I, I don't think that's the greatest analogy here. Um, if you, so let's say if you were driving your car and you accidentally hit a deer. Uh -huh. um, okay, that action isn't, I, I'd say that action isn't immoral because it wasn't your intention to do it. But if you go out and do something with the intention of causing harm, then yes, that, that like that is, that is a bad thing. Now, like, yeah, so we so you, both agree that intentionality. Right. Matters. Okay, so so intention matters. Uh, all right. Now, like, how do you think these animals are killed? Like, their throats are just slit open. Sure. Yeah. Okay, so you're causing them suffering before they die. Yeah, that is a, that is a consequence of the intention of getting food from animals. I, I understand. We both agree to that. Okay, so let's say but it, it's uh, not okay. like. It's, it's not like the factory set up to slit their throats, watch it for pleasure, and then just, like, throw it into the trash. This, okay, this, uh, I, I, I think you're kind of muddying the definition of intention a little bit. Like, let's say if um, I were to shoot a gun up in the air. Oh, it wasn't my intention to kill anybody. I Just the bullets happened to, like, hit somebody a mile down the road. Mm -hmm. oh, okay, like... You you have to fucking recognize that there are going to be like it, it is it does end up be becoming your intention if you know the full set of consequences of your actions. So like to use the deer analogy you just used, if I were to go for a drive 
to the grocery store. A deer just runs out in front of my car. I didn't intend to hit it, but I hit it. Okay. Yeah. Th that's okay. Well, that's a circumstance but where you, you do understand. Well, no, I'm not okay with the consequences of the animal dying, right? Like, I'm not saying this is a bad consequence. Uh, okay. Well, I I'd say it's a bad consequence that the deer died, but it, it doesn't matter for this this thing I'm doing, this argument I'm making. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. So if you okay, and, and then you have another scenario where you intentionally went out for a drive to hit a deer. Um. That would be, okay, so a fair comparison to make would be if I'm totally ignorant uh, of the animal products industry and, and I don't really fully understand that animals are actually tortured and killed to make my food because I, I just haven't thought of it, that would be more comparable to uh, going out you know, for a drive to just pick up groceries and then a, a deer just running out in front of my car. Now, if you know full well that as a consequence of your food choices, you are supporting like torture and, and murder of animals, then that does become your intention. If you buy any more like chicken, steak, or, or pork anymore, then that does become your intention to cause harm to these animals because you know the full set of consequences of what you're doing. I, I don't think you're using intentional correctly for this, Richard. Like I, I, I agree that there's an intention to get animal products and I agree that people can have an understanding that an animal has to die. And I'm not saying that an animal dying is, is necessarily a bad consequence. I don't have a problem with that. What I have a problem with is the intentionality of just deriving pleasure from inflicting that sort of pain on things because I think that's a fucked up thing to do. If that's your telios, if that's the goal you're attempting to get to, that's when I have a problem with it. Yeah, I, I'm still not really seeing, uh, like, I'm I'm still not seeing a significant, like, a meaningful separation between these two circumstances. Well, I'm not um, sure how more to explain the distinction. You understand the distinction between wanting to get food from an animal and that it has to die for it, and the distinction of wanting to kill and torture an animal for the fun of it, right? Like you understand these are two different concepts. Uh, I do understand that, but if you know the full set of consequences of your actions- But it's not the consequences yes, problem. That's not what I have a problem with. I don't have the problem that the consequence is that the animal dies. So there's no point of looking at it in a consequentialist lens. Uh, okay, I. This is really bizarre to me. I, I don't see how you could actually not care about the consequences. And because and I again, don't think the consequences well, are bad. Well, okay, it's the well, intentions that are bad. So okay. that's why the consequences don't matter. Okay, I, I don't know how you can separate intentions here, like the intention between torturing an animal for fun and torturing an animal to get food when you know the full set of consequences. So you, you still are torturing an animal for fun. There, there's just one level of separation there. You're doing it for chicken rather than you're just doing it for fun. Yeah, that is the distinction. That is the distinction I'm drawing. You say uh, it's okay. not meaningful, I say it's meaningful. Okay, well, I, I think that's a, a ridiculous position to have. Why? Well, because... like, And it's not... Look, Actually, don't even tell me why, because I, I respect your right to disagree with me. But, um, and because and I understand that you, you, you put your level on the consequences of that action, and therefore, no matter what happens, you, you look at it as bad. So I wouldn't expect you to have a different outlook, regardless of those intentions. But okay. where, where is in any absurdity in the public eye to this position? Okay, um, do you think it's necessary for us in modern society, like for you, uh, to eat meat to live? Well, that, that completely dodged my question. No, no, like, like, so, sorry, what question did you ask? I said, do you think what my view is is absurd in the public eye? Yes, I, I believe that would be absurd. What, that the different levels of intention? No, so I, I think they'd understand your, like, what you're saying about different levels of intention, but I think your claims about it not being, like, bad in and of itself to torture and kill an animal, that we shouldn't care about their well-being, uh, yeah, that would be totally So you think yeah. that people have a problem with killing animals for food in the public eye? Oh, totally. 
Um, look, I, I've had like I've done uh, discussions with people at activism at, at activ activism events. Uh -huh. Like, look, that like vast majority of these people, they sure as fuck wouldn't kill animals themselves. They'd say, that's, "Oh that's no, not relevant." Like, it totally is. If you wouldn't do it your fucking self, then I wouldn't do open heart lot. surgery myself. That doesn't mean no, I'm against no, no, open no, heart no, surgery. No, 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 no. Totally different fucking set of circumstances there. Look, if you if you're saying, "Oh yeah, I don't have a problem with uh, killing animals for food," and then you say, like in the next sentence, say, "Oh, but I, I think killing animals is horrible. I could never do it myself. I'd feel so bad." You don't think that you, you don't think that's kind of meaningful there? If they say I'm okay with someone else doing it, then it wouldn't have the same impact that the fact that they wouldn't do it themselves. Yeah, it would. If you look, if, if you say something is morally acceptable to kill an animal, like just shoot it in the fucking head and, and then, you know, skin it, cut it up, but sure. you wouldn't do that because it would make you feel bad because like you'd have to kill something and you know you like you took another life or you caused it suffering. Well, that yeah. fucking says right there that you don't find that action morally acceptable. No, I don't think that's the case. People can have empathetic reactions to things, but be okay with other people doing them. Okay, give an example. Well, like this, what we're talking about right now. Or just like having a person clean out a septic tank. I don't want to do it, but yeah, I don't, you don't mind someone else doing it. Yeah, because you don't know how to do it, you're not qualified, or you And just I just don't, don't want to do it. Yeah, okay. That's you can't compare cleaning out a septic tank to killing an animal. Yes, I can. If people are okay with it, then they're okay with it. That this is the distinction we're trying to say whether or not they're morally okay with it. And I'm well, saying if they not. say to you, no. I'm cleaning okay with other people clean. doing it, then no. they're okay with it. No, 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 no. Okay, so you're trying to compare uh, cleaning out of uh, like the morality of cleaning out a septic tank to the morality of killing an animal. I, I'm making an it's analogy. Of no, people who well, it's won't a bad do analogy. something themselves, well, but it's are okay with someone else doing it. It's a bad analogy because one, there's no moral issue with cleaning out a septic tank, but there are potential moral issues with killing an animal. Yeah, what and, my point is, it doesn't become a moral issue just because you're not okay with doing it yourself. That doesn't automatically yes, it does. make it yes, a moral it does. issue. Yes, it does. When you're claiming that you, you feel would be bad the after septic doing tank it, analogy is a moral. No, 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 no. It does make it a moral situation if you're claiming you would feel bad after doing it. You would feel like you did something wrong after killing an animal. If you're cleaning out a fucking septic tank if and you wouldn't feel wrong. bad after doing it, then you have a completely di different set of uh, reasons for why you wouldn't want to clean out a septic tank. Hey, you well, don't know how to do it. You, you, made an extra, you made an extra claim there to say that they said it, they, it would be bad if they did it. No, okay, they so feel bad. And, and I didn't make an extra claim. They said I, I explained it at the very beginning. I, that I said uh, all these, a lot of these people I talk to, what, when I, I ask them, what, uh, if they're okay with um, killing animals for food, they said they say, "Oh yeah." And then, and then when I ask them, "Okay, well, um, would you do it yourself? Would you be fine with shooting a cow in the head, slitting its throat open?" Then they said, "They told me like, oh, there's no way I could do that. I'd feel really bad after doing it." Right, but you, yeah, so, so you're saying if they say they feel bad, this is on automatically contradictory with being some okay with someone else so. doing it. Well, the reason they're okay with someone else doing it is because they don't have to deal with the moral consequences of their action. Well, this their is actions. what they do if they understand it at a conceptual level. If they understand what's occurring, Not they at all. know, Not they at know all. the animal is being stabbed and shot and turned into beef, and they're okay with that. They, they verbally tell you, yes, I am okay with that occurring. Then the fact that they feel bad... Not at all. ...that they have an empathetic reaction, but it doesn't cross so so much over that they think it's a moral problem not at all uh look they're like their situation like you can have a situation where people will say they're okay with doing this sort of thing and then when they actually go to a slaughterhouse they think it's horrible like okay. they just can't handle it and and a lot of them go vegan or vegetarian yeah well if in, if that's the case then i would say that they, they okay. didn't have their values lined up or that it didn't, they didn't no, 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 they didn't actually understand the actual reality of what's going yeah, on. No, they I'm understand. agreeing with you. I'm not, I'm not disagreeing with you. I do think that is sometimes the case. Right. But you're saying this is the public opinion. Yeah, I, I think the vast majority of people uh, would not want to kill animals themselves because they'd feel like they did something morally wrong and they wouldn't be able to 
handle the uh, consequences of what they're doing. Look, look at the rates of fucking PTSD in slaughterhouse workers. They're, they have such a fucking massive turnover rate. Because What's the rate just, of PTSD on small farms? I, I have no idea. But uh, among slaughterhouse farms workers, are vegans? Sorry? You think small farms who killed cows and pigs and stuff are vegan? Well, no, but we're talking about the general population. Like, like I'm imagining people who grew up on small farms, they, they just grew up doing that sort of thing, like killing sure. animals. So if they don't get so PTSD we're talking, over it, then it has nothing well, to do that, with killing well, animals. No, we're not That's talking it. about people who live on small farms. We're talking about people who live in the general population. That was what you were talking about at first. Now you're changing the set of... No, no, I, I'm talking about the, the general population's uh, yeah. attitudes towards killing animals. If you're yes. saying factory farms is the only way we can kill animals... Because no, no. Awesome. Well, it is. Well, no. Factory farms are the only ways we, way we can kill animals, uh, assuming we we keep the same uh, same like we no, keep up with demand. I don't see why we need to make that. Assumption. Yes, we do. It, that's the only way to do it to keep up with demand. Yes, yeah, to keep up with way. demand. Yeah. Who who said that is unnecessary? Oh, okay. Well, are, are you saying we have to dramatically cut back our animal product intake? Hey, if we're getting like PTSD workers from uh, slaughterhouse farms and that's the only way to do it, then I would see a good argument for not doing it that way. But that still wouldn't be an argument for veganism. Okay, well, again, I, I think they'd still get PTSD even if they were just slitting animals' throats open in an open field. Well, that's what I asked you. Do you, do you have stats on PTSD on small farms? Okay, well, uh, again, like, I, I don't know if you understand how the system works. So usually these people on small farms, they don't actually slaughter the animals themselves. They take it to a processing plant. I've been on a small farm and I've slaughtered animals. Okay. Okay, well, usually what happens is, e even on smaller farms, like unless it's a, a private hobby farm, like even that. This is their job. Okay. <laughs> They're farmers by trade. Okay, well, oftentimes they send it off to a processing plant and, and then they don't even do it themselves. But again, the reason these people don't have a problem with it is because they just grew up in that life, you know, since they were, they were young children. Okay, I like, don't know how to take that assertion. Like, uh, uh, okay, I understand okay, what okay, you're saying. Listen, how would I verify that? Oh, okay, well, I, I don't have any actual data to show you, but I think it's, you know, I, I'm pretty sure... When I'm you're not gonna actually take pretty sure. like, okay, like, fine. I don't, okay, listen, listen, fine. I don't have any data on it, but the fact is, there there's extremely high rates of PTSD and turnover rate in slaughterhouse workers. Yeah, sure. uh, be, because so, so of, me and you will agree can't handle that it. if there's if there's a certain practice or, or a way of slaughtering animals that causes PTSD, we should probably do something about that. So so that we do it at a rate where people do not get PTSD. Okay, uh, do you... you're not, you're not going to get any disagreement from me on that one. Okay, look, um, my dad told me when he was a kid, he had a 22 caliber rifle. He shot a squirrel once, uh, uh -huh. like, just to see, like, if he could hit it. And then after he shot the squirrel, he saw its, like, dead, lifeless body fall from the tree. And he felt insanely horrible after doing that. And he, he never killed another animal himself again. Um, yeah. And... Sounds so, like that uh, hyper empathy runs in your family, then. No, I, I think that's probably what happens with the the majority of people. Um, so he he never killed another animal himself again, but he still eats fucking meat. People are fine. Like people are very good at blocking things out and just going along with whatever anyone is doing if they don't have to deal with the moral like the moral complications of of the situation. Like if they're detached from actually killing these animals. Well, they're fine with going to the store and, and buying a pack of meat, but if they actually had to do it themselves, they'd probably feel horrible. And my dad's a good example of that. I, I've known, uh, what, Jenna Marbles, she said when she was a young kid, she accidentally ran, ran over a squirrel on her bike, and she started crying because she ran over the squirrel. Well, you can find plenty of anecdotal examples of people like e either intentionally or accidentally killing animals, and um, they feel terrible after they do it. Yeah. So... Like I, I don't I don't know what point you're trying to make with this. I don't know what try, point you're trying to make with this. To be honest. Okay. Like the point is, I, I think this is the general like this is the general opinion in society that that like, people just don't like the idea of killing animals or harming animals. Yeah, well, I so don't know I, if I that goes exactly with the meat industry. Now, I get that you're trying to make a statement that you know if people were faced with the reality of it 
then maybe they would change their minds. This is a position neither of us could really verify other than just throwing anecdotal evidence. So you're saying, you know, you go on these these expeditions and you you probably show people videos and stuff from slaughterhouses well, and well look I, I don't think i'm very biased in saying this like if you watch the joe rogan podcast joe rogan's a big hunter and he's even like criticized people like they he says oh everyone looks down on hunters and, and you know he's part of the hunting community so i'm sure he faces a lot of this he gets people telling him all the time like oh you're such an asshole you kill these like innocent animals but and then he says, well, these same people are eating at McDonald's where the animals are treated way worse. Like again, even you can find people who aren't vegan who are hunters who are perfectly fine with killing animals who will make the same argument I'm making. So I, I don't think I'm biased in saying this. Like obviously I don't have any real data, but I don't think I'm being biased in saying this. This is it, it's not I like I I 100% disagree with you because I know that people do have these sort of empathetic reactions to animals, but I also don't know that that means that they're not okay with you know, eating animals and killing them for the food that they get. Okay. Like, you're saying that maybe there's this huge disconnect, right? Where, totally. where they're not really putting two and two together. They, they, they know they're getting the food, but they don't really realize what's occurring in order to get the food. And that's the disconnect that's allowing them to do that. I, okay. I can get that that's your argument. Okay, listen, um, people can block things out of their, like people can know they're doing something wrong, but just block it out of their mind because there's like a, like a physical disconnection when they go to the store. Okay. Well, they're just seeing a steak. They're not actually seeing the animal be being abused, cut up, murdered, and, and then the steak comes to them. So it's mm -hmm. easy to block that out of their mind. Um, there was a, a really great documentary. Uh, it was about like a, a genocide that happened in the, I think the Philippines where, um, the where the 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 filmmaker the the guy running the documentary he'd interview these these dudes who committed the genocide they were coming up with these weird excuses for why they um why they committed this genocide um and they'd basically try to dehumanize the people they killed and you could tell like in the documentary they they felt horrible about what they done they they had done after the fact mm -hmm. so people can delude themselves like people can construct scenarios in their head to justify what they're doing, but think what they're doing is, is horrible. So sure. yeah, I, I agree with you. And I think this is like the majority of moral conversation is that they're based on conceptions of reality, which may or may not be true. Right. Sure. Or, or just incomplete where, where this is sure. more the argument that you're going for, for um, the meat industry. Sure. This, but but I, I don't actually think people have the, the same reactions to, to, you know, what we call humane killings, where, where they understand that the kills aren't like these, these torturous events, where they just stun them and kill them. I think most people are fine to that degree. I agree that most people, when you show them something like earthlings, they'll, they'll have that empathetic reaction. And I'll agree with you, that's the popular opinion. I just don't think it's the popular opinion for full veganism. Okay, well, no, veganism isn't the popular opinion. A lot of people do say, okay, well, we should use humane slaughter, but when they actually see humane slaughter, they have very similar similar reactions. Um, Jamie that, that Oliver, no, 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 my listen. Experience. Well, well, listen, um, Jamie Oliver did a cooking show where uh, I was televised, uh, I think. Um, so he had a live chicken there. He hung it upside down. Uh, he stunned it with uh, electricity, so it was unconscious, and then he slit its throat open. So that's actually more humane than how chickens are killed in the industry. In industry, they just slice, slice their throats open, and, and I guess for TV, he had the electric prod that just totally stunned the chicken, and then he slit its throat open. Sure, yeah. So the crowd reacted like, oh, fuck, he, he just killed that, that fucking poor chicken. Um, what was it, uh, BuzzFeed? did uh, a thing where they went to an organic free range chicken farm. And then these people had to pick out their chicken, uh, slit its throat open. Um, all of them, except the one dude felt like bad about it. They're like, Oh, this doesn't feel right. And like, I feel kind of weird after doing this. Like, so even under the most humane circumstances, I wouldn't consider slitting uh, an animal's throat open humane. I wouldn't like if like, like, again, if we were to do this with a person, would you yeah. consider it a humane killing to slit a guy that somebody's throat open? Is it humane to just shoot somebody in the head? Uh, I think the idea of humane slaughter is just ridiculous. I mean, if you're going to, like, if we're talking about see it. death row inmates, yeah, I think there are more humane ways to kill a death row inmate than there 
than other, other alternatives, like everybody just beating them with bats. I, okay, I would make well, a distinction of humane killing of, of a death row inmate. Okay, well, people on death row die pretty horribly. Um, what they used to use... Well, would you make that same distinction? Would you say there's a humane way to kill a death row inmate? And I, I, I don't believe... Like, I don't believe in humane killing. If a being has a desire to live, there's no way to humanely kill it. The only humane killings are uh, assisted suicide. Okay. Well, then that would be a humane killing, but... Yeah, that, that's, the only, that's the only circumstance where I'd call it a humane killing. Like, if a being wants to live, then you're directly going against its well-being to kill it. But do you at least make a distinction of, like, different ways to kill something? Yeah, where some, you would say one worse. is worse than... Uh, yeah, okay. yeah. But, but you I just wouldn't, wouldn't classify any of them as humane because your definition of humane doesn't yeah, a, yeah. encompass that. Whereas mine would. Right. So that's just a difference we have in that word usage. But anyways, that's kind of diverting from the point because um, we're more talking about what the public eye is. Right. And I think I think at first you were kind of asking me why I thought your ideas were absurd. And, the, and then you challenged me to give like some sort of evidence or something that that would be the majority opinion. Mm -hmm. And it's not like I disagree with you that people have some sort of empathetic responses, but I just don't think that that makes them encompass animals as, as a part of their moral consideration. Okay. Um, I think it does. And I think it slowly is. Uh, I think as people kind of learn about the industry and what's going on and that, you know, like even under the best circumstances, okay, well, you're still slitting an animal's throat open. I, I think as people realize this, more and more people are going vegan. Um, and uh, I mean, look, uh, just well, given that neither of us have the ability to empirically prove the other one. Sure. Wrong, sure. Sure. I'm not sure where we can go from that, that particular thing. So just the fact that you're asserting it at me, I, I can't do anything with that. Right. right so if right. you're going to say that I'm absurd because of a position that neither of us can prove that, that, that makes the debate pointless. Okay. Well, you know what? Um, why don't we kind of give some final statements and, and wrap this up? Would you would you want to just wrap up this conversation? I, I think we've kind of exhausted every avenue. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess we could, but I, I just want to know what you consider the, the debate win condition. Like, where, where do you think this is? Okay, well, I think I've... Uh, so I think I've kind of pointed out some more minor contradictions in, in, your, in your moral views. So um, you agree that a contradiction is P and not P at the same time, right? Yeah, yeah. So, so uh, what I, I, P and not P do I hold? Okay, so I, I know you gave an argument for this, but uh, like you're making a distinction between the two things, but I don't think it's a, a real meaningful distinction, and, and I see it as a contradiction. Like I know you'd still disagree, but you've said that um, it's like – it's not good. It's sort of like a moral wrong for somebody to want to cause suffering to a being, even if it's not self-aware. So it's not able to suffer to the same level we are. Um, but like, because as an intention, right? yeah, because of the intention. But the point I made is, okay, well, it, it, it is ine inevitably your intention, at least as it, as at least as long as you're fully aware of the consequences of your actions, that um, it is your intention to cause harm when you're buying any kind of animal product. Um, because as an inevitable consequence of the of the industry, animals are going to suffer and die. And if you know the consequences of your actions, then it is your intention to cause these animals suffering for your own personal pleasure. And all you've done is tried to make a, a, a distinction here where, oh, well, these people only want food. They're not actually trying to harm the animals, but it is, it, it comes along with that. So I know you had your own argument against that. Uh, I, I just don't see that as valid. Okay. So that, that's um, a contradiction. I, I'd say that's the, the real biggest contradiction there. And, and I also don't think uh, you've made a meaningful distinction between, um, uh, what was it, uh, the two types of memory and um, being self-aware and non-self-aware. I, I don't think you've made a, a very good case uh, as to why we should give moral consideration to self-aware creatures and not not give uh, any moral consideration to non-self-aware creatures. So a lot of my problem here is that it just sounds like you subjectively disagree with the distinctions that I make. You're just saying okay, they're not, not meaningful moral. because they're not meaningful to well, you. It, it's and not, there's not a lot I can do with that. 
Well, it's it's not just that it, it's my personal feeling. Uh, I also gave the rodent uh, example where rodents can actually understand that they're suffering. They can feel understand that other animals are suffering similar to how they have suffered. So even if you're going to say that they're not self-aware, well, clearly uh, there's not really a, a, a very meaningful distinction between uh, self-awareness and non-self-awareness when these animals have a clear uh, understanding of suffering and potential danger and death, uh, whether they're self-aware or not. Like, yeah, at those aren't, your definition. Those aren't, those aren't the distinctions. I'm not trying to lead to these sort of suffering concepts that you go to. Right. I, I'm talking about a specific thing I value. And then you're telling me, well, this thing you value, um, even without it, animals can do this. Well, I don't care because that's not like the, my my value goal. Well, well, basically, you're saying without um, without some kind of understanding, like without self-awareness, you don't have a higher level of understanding of pain, suffering, um, consequence when clearly you can have a, a pretty high level of pain, suffering, and consequence. I already told you that your understanding of suffering, that you have one that is outside of self-awareness. And I said, fine, that's fine. I, I agree that pain exists. And if you want to call that sort of pain, suffering, fine. But then I have a separate concept that I'm telling you I care about. So the fact that your thing still exists does not discredit the fact, the thing that I care about. Okay, is there any like real empir empirical way for you to tell me that when I uh, cut off uh, like a cow's leg uh, and it like bleeds out, it's in horrible pain, like it, it's in any greater or, or lesser state of suffering than if I did that to a human? It's all inferential. Like right. all these, all these okay. types of studies of phenomenology. Okay, well, when you look at how... Here. Right. If well, you're looking for something deductive, you're not going to get it. Right. Okay. So, so like, I still think it's totally unreasonable for you to make these sorts of moral distinctions where, oh yeah, it's totally like, it's fine to just cause mass suffering in a Holocaust because, you know, we can kind of make an inference that uh, cows and pigs and chickens, they don't really suffer as much as people do. Okay. Like you so, keep saying reasonable as if a value can be reasonable. Uh, okay. Okay. Great. Like I, I, I know that whole rabbit hole, but do you want to make it? Well, your... okay. If you know the rabbit hole and you don't disagree with the rabbit hole, I do. what's the problem? Wait, well, so you're saying values can be reasoned. Well, no, you're just, well, no, you're just trying to like, you're just arbitrarily selecting values. That That's my problem. Like arbitrarily, no, these just are my values. No, Richard. I'm just telling you what they are. Look, if you give humans fundamental rights, I don't see a, like I don't see a reason for you to not give animals some of these fundamental rights, like right to life, right to well-being, um, when yeah, they clearly reason, possess like, I, no, I when they clearly when they clearly possess similar traits that would make you want to give a human a right to life. But those are not the traits that I've, I've outlined, are they? Well, I know, and I've I've explained why I don't think your definition of self-awareness is really all that, like, it's not all that reasonable uh, of a standard. I don't understand what you mean by reasonable. You keep bringing up this word like there's I was not a meaningful distinction. Reason. There's not a there's not a great enough distinction for you to make between uh, your def your definition of self-awareness and lack of self-awareness, where these animals just can't have the ability to experience but well-being they, and suffering. You cannot the complain as, about it as, as a, a subjectivist, Richard. I'm telling you, this is what I value. This is a distinction that I find meaningful. The fact that you don't find it meaningful means nothing to me. Uh, well, like. Anyone can make any values they want. No, you I cannot make any values you want. You can describe your values, but you cannot make them. I, I can tell you that my value is to run around murdering people, but I'm not going to feel joy from doing it. All I can do is describe my values as they are. Right, but there's no way for me to actually know your values. Sure. You can only take my word for it. But right. your, your, your attempt here is to find problems with my values as if there were a contradiction or not. And, and I haven't seen you be able to do that okay, other than the well, fact that you well, don't like, you don't like them because you don't find them meaningful enough. Well, there's nothing I can do to make you gain you, well, the same no. meaning as me. Well, well, no, I, I have actually explained that. You were basically saying that animals can't, uh, like basically can't understand suffering, pain, uh, ex like experience pain or understand the consequence of death uh, to the same level as, as humans can because they don't have self-awareness. 
And I was giving you an example in that rodent study where they appear to do have like a very high level of understanding of pain, suffering, and consequence of death, similar to similar to humans. I told you, and, those and behaviors I, are not based on self conceptualization. Now you can disagree with that fact, but that's how I see it. Okay, well, if you actually have that experience of it happening to yourself, I, I don't know how you could say, well, it's totally not based on self-conceptualization. How could I not have a self-conceptualization if I'm a thing that can self-conceptualize? That's like asking me to put my mind into something else, but also be something different. That doesn't make any sense. Obviously, if, okay, if it's okay, from my wait, point of view, wait. it's always going to have that. Okay, wait, again, you're saying you're basically making this claim out of inferences that, you know, rodents can't self-conceptualize. Yeah. Right, okay, and, and I gave you evidence that they can. That's not evidence that they can, is what I'm telling you. Okay, well, I, I disagree there. Okay, that's, that's fine if you disagree. Maybe you'll look into phenomenology and you, you might change your mind. But if you don't at the moment, I'm okay with that but I'm just saying this is how I see. Okay, uh, like again, did you wanna make any kind of final statements here? Um, I feel like this debate, I, I understand your points, but ultimately I think all it came down to was the fact that you have a subjective difference than I do. I don't think there's been any contradictions. I've made my distinctions clear and I don't think I've denied any human rights that, that would be in place to any normal system. Okay, fair enough. Um, I think um, it would be maybe good to set up another debate. I thought this was really interesting. It, it was one of my more challenging debates, and uh, you're definitely one of my smarter debate opponents. So, oh, thank you. Um, so, um, I think yeah. So, I, I think we'll just end it here. Um, you know, I think we both made our case. Uh, the audience can kind of make their own decisions on what they think of this. Oh, they're all your fans, anyways. Let's be real. Uh, no, no, I, I have quite a lot of haters watching my videos, so uh, you know, <laughs> people people can make their own decisions, and you, you'll have this uploaded on your channel. Um, but yeah, maybe uh, sometime down the road when I kind of think of these things more, uh, learn about some of these different topics, we can set up another debate. Um, sure, sure. And, and if you want to message me off screen, you don't even want to have a do it in a debate style, you, you can just go ahead and do that. I, I'm very friendly, and I have vegan friends that I, I discuss these issues with all the time. So I, I'm not here in, in the spirit of hostility, but yeah, I, sure. I do argue as hard as I can, obviously. Yeah, sure. But um, I, thank you for having me on. Yeah, no problem. Um, yeah, it was a good debate. Uh, thanks for coming. Um, yeah, yeah, and uh, maybe in the future we can set up another. Uh, so uh, I'm just going to read off uh, the one super chat that I was sent, and uh, you can just log off. Okay, thanks for having right. me on. Bye. No problem. See ya. Okay, um, there was one super chat, I believe. Uh, Ordeal Given Tour donated five dollars. He says, "Hi, vegan gains. Love your stuff. My vegan club at my uni often goes, or often does. Going vegan is an obligation. Change my mind. It, uh, it's great. Hopefully, you and A, uh, AY can do it." Um, so, ask yourself and I are in Guelph. We were planning on doing that at the Guelph University. Uh, turns out the animal rights uh, organization at the Guelph University doesn't want to be want us to be on campus and is actively trying to prevent us from going onto the campus because um, they don't align with our political beliefs. They think we're too far right wing. So I'd like to do something like that, but um, it looks like we're going to have to. Uh, I don't know, fight a little bit with uh, that animal rights organization or find some other venue to do it. So um, yeah, we'll see. Uh, it's kind of a weird, retarded situation, but uh, thanks for the donation uh, ordeal. Um, so that's it for the debate. Uh, it was pretty interesting. Um, I wouldn't say that, yeah, like I, I'd say I did point out a pretty meaningful contradiction there. He was kind of trying to make uh, a separation between killing an animal for food while knowing that you are going to uh, like torture the animal before it gets to you and actually intentionally torturing the animal. Um, both actions, you are torturing an animal for pleasure, so I, I don't see a meaningful distinction there. So I do see that as uh, a bit of a contradiction. Also, um, he, like, I, I'm not too familiar with some of the terms he was using, but again, it seemed like he was just making a very 
arbitrary line uh, with like a certain definition of self-awareness he was coming up with where he was basically saying, oh, well, they don't have any concept of self. So how they how could they really feel pain or suffer? Well, again, if you, if you look at the rodent studies I mentioned, um, they they do appear to have a relatively high level of understanding of pain, suffering, consequence of death. They had that experience themselves, and then when they see another uh, rat having that same experience, they're like, "Oh shit, that happened to me! I'm gonna save that that rat." So, they like even animals where they don't have self awareness to the level, or, or you know, self awareness uh, under the definition that he described, they do seem to still understand these concepts, and even if they don't, still like they can clearly suffer. They clearly have a desire to live. So I think like, I think what he said is just pretty ridiculous. Uh, Jacob Silwani donated $2. He says, uh, what did you find most challenging about the debate? Okay. So I thought the most challenging thing is like, he was very good at coming up with, um, added exceptions where I couldn't find uh, a contradiction. I, I think I did eventually catch him in a contradiction. Um, so like he said, um, like he'd basically say, okay, well, human species and, um, self-awareness are the two factors that I, I value. So, you know, using those two traits, it made it a little more difficult to, uh, find a contradiction in his ethical views. So I'd say that was probably the most challenging thing about the debate. I also don't know too much about uh, the different types of memory he was referring to, uh, you know, the definition of self-awareness he was referring to. So um, I think before I do that, uh, do another debate with him, I might want to look up some of these things. I was a little caught there. So I think those were the most challenging aspects of the debate. But again, uh, I think I came up with a decent argument against uh, against that where, you know, even if we agree, okay, well, you know, these animals we're eating, they don't have self-awareness. Well, okay, clearly they can still feel pain, suffer. Um, you know, maybe I should have also brought up the argument like, okay, if you were a cow, would you be perfectly fine with uh, somebody like torturing and killing you? Like, maybe that's an argument I could have brought up, but... Um, yeah, he, he was a little slippery in that way. So that was the um, that was the most uh, difficult aspect of the debate. But thanks for the donation, Jacob. Curvy Vegan donated two ninety nine. Uh, she she says a bit of extra coin for the YouTube band. Thanks for today. Well, thank you, Curvy Vegan. Uh, yeah, that was a really good, challenging debate. Uh, I like having difficult debate opponents. So um, yeah, it, and it hones my debate skills. But uh, thanks for the donation again, Curvy. Uh, Caleb, the business owner, donated five dollars. Uh, he says, "Will you do uh, uh, a post debate talk with Isaac?" Uh, says he's down. If you are, yeah, I'll do a post debate talk. Um, I really like hearing uh, different opinions, both positive and negative, after a debate. Like again, I'm really interested in learning. Uh, you know, honing my debate skills, uh, learning different ways of tackling these different arguments. So, uh, yeah, I am going to do a post-debate talk with Isaac uh, right after I end the stream. But thanks for the uh, donation, Caleb. Uh, Austin T. donated $1.99. He says, my favorite debate, goodish. Um, yeah, like, again, this was, a, this was a challenging debate for me because it was kind of difficult to catch him in a contradiction. And not too much of what he said really led to absurdities, but... Um, basically, under his uh, moral system, it would be perfectly fine if you were to just torture, like horribly, horrifically torture animals. And um, even in circumstances where like horrible, horrific torture is um, sort of an emergent factor in like the animal products industry, like horrible torture isn't the reason we're, we're raising animals, but it's an inevitable consequence. He said, oh yeah, that's perfectly fine, whatever. So that was pretty fucked up and absurd. Um, but yeah, uh, it was a good debate. Um, and uh, yeah, maybe I'll uh, debate with him again uh, if I you know, come across any new information that I think is, uh, you know, that I, that I think would give me a, a bit of a stronger edge and maybe we can reopen some of these topics. But uh, thanks for the donation, Austin. So uh, big thanks to everyone who donated, uh, you know, in the super chats. 
Uh, I will re-upload this video to my main channel, so if you didn't catch the full debate, you can you know just see it there. And um, yeah, with that said, as always, just keep making those vegan gains. Have a nice day, everybody.